hey guys and welcome back i just want to jump right into it so this is the frontal clearly it's already bleached i did bleach it one time but i thought it would be a good idea to film this for you guys in case anybody asks which you guys did so i am going in and bleaching it a second time plus there were a few little knots so i did want to go over it so here is my consistency it's more like a toothpaste consistency i figure it's better to be thicker than watery so that way it won't seep through the lace um here i'm gonna show you guys in a second here are the products that i'm going to be using while bleaching this hair the free spray and the shimmer lights shampoo this is just going to help stop processing the hair when it's time to wash it so i'm going to go in with the got to be glued freeze blast spray this is helpful to just put like a barrier between the hair and the lace if that makes sense so that way um potentially the bleach does not seep through to the hair so this creates like a barrier. I'm not sure where I got this idea from. I completely forgot. But this actually this actually really does work, especially if you're like a beginner when it comes to bleaching knots. So just try to make sure you let it dry. I was a little impatient, so it's still a little wet, but it still works just fine. But if you can, I would say get a blow dryer, let it dry up a little bit just to create, you know, a nice barrier between the bleach and the hair. Because say your consistency is too watery, then you know your bleach will probably end up touching your hair and you'll have blonde roots and you don't want that so i'm sorry for the angle guys i really do apologize i don't have a tripod like i've said before so i'm really just working with what i have bear with me please bear with me well i'll do better soon later on in the future but um i just applied the bleach as like a bunch of youtubers or probably a bunch of other videos you guys have seen how everybody applies it i use a butter knife um i got this idea from um arnell arnell armand she does bomb wig so if you guys want to definitely check her out but um she uses a butter knife when bleaching her knots i forgot why i don't think she said why but it is really um helpful and it's kind of easier to apply the bleach so i literally just put it on spread it as if it's like cream cheese like as if you're buttering a bagel like that's how i think that's the best metaphor i can give you guys um i sped it up but i promise you guys i'm being so light-handed and so gentle and um making sure not to push like the bleach into the roots that's so important do not push like your knife do not push the bleach like don't if you're gonna hold the hair from the bottom just hold it with a light hand and do not put so much pressure when applying i'm telling you guys be as light-handed and take your time there's no rush take your time i did forget to tell you guys about what bleach and developer i use because of the pandemic beauty supply stores are closed so i just used a beach bleach packet from cvs and a um, developer out of a box dye Okay, so you guys are going to see shortly, but I do let the hair sit in tin foil. I let the hair sit for about 20 to 25 minutes, definitely no longer than 25 minutes because this is my second time bleaching the knots and I don't want to over process the hair. So the first time I did leave it on for 30 minutes, about 25, 30 minutes because I wasn't patient, but leave it on for I say about 30 minutes. And then if you're going to bleach it a second time, do not do more than, honestly, I would say 25 minutes. So this is the finish, I mean, this is like the finished look of it. And then I'm just gonna put some tin foil on top of it and let that sit for about 20 minutes. And then we'll be right back to wash it out. Okay, so now it has been about 20 minutes later. So we're going to take the tin foil off and I'm going to show you guys just what it's looking like. It looks no different really. My hair is still um, like a 1B. My, you know roots aren't blonde that's really what you want to look for and if you can put up to the light and just see you know if you can tell the knots have lightened you can't really see right now but that's usually what i do before i decide to you know rinse everything off so first thing i'm gonna do is just clearly you know run the water i do rinse it um underneath hot water i don't know if it makes a difference whether hot or cold um either way it didn't i didn't really let it matter to me i was just trying to get it off and get it rinsed off basically Now I'm going to go in with the Shimmer Lights Shampoo and this really just helps to keep the lace from turning like an orangey kind of brassy kind of color and I also think it helps to stop like or slow down no yeah stop the bleaching process sorry guys but um 
yeah so i just honestly put that mainly on the lace remember you don't really have to put it on the hair it's not necessary i mean you can if you want to just shampoo the hair as well but eventually it's going to just like trickle down to the hair so i don't worry about all of that Okay, so I decided to add this part in because this is still part of my process of installing. So as you can see, my hairline is very, very low. So what I do with my lace frontals, I usually pull them down until my edges are completely covered on both sides. So this side is good and I check for the other side and pull it down because I can still see some hair peeking out and I check and so this side is good. So clearly we don't want to leave our lace looking like this, but don't worry, we're going to get to that shortly. But first I'm going to take some Gorilla Snack Glue. I didn't have any kind of edge control on hand, so I just took the strongest glue that I could find, um, well the strongest gel that I could find, and decided just to lay that with my edges. I take the tiniest amount, because y'all it's only for your edges, so I take the tiniest amount, and plus it flakes up, so I don't want that to, you know, potentially mess up the installing um, process. If you guys are curious as to why I'm adding this step, because I know there are other people out there like me with small foreheads or low hairlines or both, and you know, I feel like they probably can't, you know, rock a wig. So I feel like this would be helpful just for people like, you know, with those type of struggles to know how to basically work with what you have. So once I have all my edges laid, I'm just going to pull my lace to the front and I'm gonna show you guys exactly, well first I make sure, you know, my hair is covered on both sides before we start getting to the next step. So both sides look pretty good, at least around the edges. I'm not worried about the front of the hairline yet. We'll get to that in a moment. So now that my edges are completely covered, now we're gonna work on the front part of the hairline. What I'm simply gonna do is just pull out the hairs until I reach my natural hairline, until I reach at least a little bit in front of my hairline. And I don't show you guys this, but I do continue to make sections and continue to pluck. So I don't want you guys to think that I just sectioned off one section and only plucked one section. No, I do multiple small sections um, and pluck those off until I reach nearly the front of my hairline. So take as many sections as you need. Just don't think that it's going to be one section and done because I just don't show it to you guys. But I didn't want this to be too, too lengthy. Make sure you pull them out in small sections. You don't want to rip the lace and you can definitely do that by pulling out too large of a section. So just literally take small pieces and just pluck like one by one. So as you can see, the hairline is slowly going back and my edges are still covered and that's what we want. That's exactly what we're focusing on. And I'm pulling it up just to check on my hairline and it's right in front of my hairline. And so right here, I think we're gonna leave it because it looks pretty good because we still have to pluck and everything like that. So we don't wanna pull it back too far. So now I'm just gonna take the wig off my head and then we're gonna get on to plucking or tweezing the wig. So I already went ahead and tweezed one side this is how it's looking so far. I'm gonna show you guys how I do the other side in just a moment, but just to show you guys how it looks tweezed, and then I'll show you guys how it looks again untweezed. So just to give you guys a comparison, this is the side I have not touched yet, so this is how the hairline looks untweezed. It does come pre-plucked, but you know, clearly it could be a lot better, and that's what we're about to do. So to start off, I'm gonna take a spray bottle. It's only water, I only have water in it. Then I'm only gonna spray the edges of the hairline. I find that it works a lot better trying to tweeze the hairline when it's wet, cause I feel like everything is more visible as opposed to the hair being dry. It appears more dense and you think that you plucked a lot when really you didn't or you can over pluck because it's dry and it looks dense. So I start off by taking a very thin section. So the hair did still look a little dry so I'm just going to take a spray bottle and just spray a little bit more water just to make it a little bit more wet. And I'm going to start tweezing 
Um, I do not tweeze the section that I made. So remember that, do not tweeze the actual hairline, tweeze behind the hairline. Because you don't want your wigs to appear over plucked. And I feel as though if you start to pluck the actual section part, then you'll thin out the it, you'll thin out the wigs edges and it'll appear over plucked and it just it won't look good sis so let's just what I do is I stick behind the hairline um when I am plucking I don't really stay in one section for longer than like oh yeah you're gonna have shedding expect shedding but I don't really stay in one section for longer than probably like five seconds if that but I'll mainly do probably like one, two, three, pull, next section, one, two, three, next section, one, two, three, next section, one, two, three, next section. Like, I, I think that's the rhythm that kind of helps me, you know, throughout the process. So I did tweeze this hairline, at least the sides, the edges all the way back into where the lace meets the wig cap. Because this front toe, I don't know the size of it, but it's not like your usual front toes where it's like the same size from like ear to ear. The edges tend to be a bit more slimmer. So, you know, it's less to tweeze, but you know, I find it looks more natural just tweezing the edges all the way back to the wig cap for this wig in particular, I'm not saying for every wig. Um, yeah, the tweezing is pretty repetitive. It's the same thing all around that I do. Um, just take your time with it because this is a process. I don't know how long this took me, but it took a while. And your hands are going to cramp up. Like, I promise you, like, your hands are going to hurt. You're going to see it in a minute that, like, my hands are going to start to hurt. But it is a process, so just take your time with it. And like I said, yep, see, there goes my hand. <laughs> but like I said, just um, go up and down or pick a random section and just maybe do like one, two, three, pluck, one, two, three, pluck, one, two, three, pluck. Like don't stay in on the section for too long. And I don't show you guys, but I do make sure to continuously like brush all the hair back and just check to see how the entire section is looking just to kind of get an idea of how much more I need to pluck or if I should stop so just make sure you guys do that so here is the other side I did go in and pluck it some more because after looking at the other side I felt like it could you know be a little bit more plucked and I honestly felt like the other side was a little over plucked but once I put it on it was completely completely fine so this is how both sides are looking and I'm just gonna do the same thing to the top because like I said tweezing is pretty repetitive so I'm just giving you guys a good look at the sides just so you guys can see it looks so 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 much more natural than at first so for here I still haven't touched the crown part of the hairline yet um, it's pretty repetitive I do the same thing all around the only difference I do is that once I'm done tweezing this section I'll really pull all the hair back and I will tweeze the actual front of the hairline but only for this section all right so I did want to come back and show you guys how my frontal is looking so please ignore my lace lifting right here it's been a few days since I've actually installed this wig and I need to fix it so it's just ignore that this is how it looks and it doesn't look bad like it's not like sitting on my forehead you know it still looks pretty natural i think i feel like you know people think it's actually my hair so that's always a good sign um if you guys give this a shot let me know how it goes and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video